Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come in, come in, come in. So, guys, this is Tamika's Den. I am Tamika, okay? Let's talk Kings of Napa, y'all. Tonight was the season finale. All right, this episode was called Judas and the Black on Vineyard, season one, episode eight, okay? So, we picked up this episode with Mr. Calvin coming to see August. You know, he's saying he's been calling her for a week. She ain't been answering. She like, that's what you call ghosting, okay? She didn't want to be bothered with him. She's still feeling upset from the incident that happened with the soon-to-be ex-wife showing up at her house. As she should be, okay? I can understand her on that. And he is saying that, listen, this is a crazy custody battle going on between me and her. She will use anything against me, of course. You know, it could get ugly. And I'm sorry that she came to your house, you know. Um, she's also mad at him for still representing Bridget. Now, that part, I cannot agree with you on, August, okay? Again, I've said this before. I'm not understanding how he's more willing to believe that it could be more to the story. And this may not be, you know, something that Bridget is behind. But you can't when you should be knowing Bridget and her character much better than he does, Okay. Also, with how everything turned out with Otis and it not being him, I would just think that you would second guess it, that you would be doing some more investigating work, dotting all your I's and crossing all your T's to make sure that you are 100%, you know, right about Bridget before jeopardizing her in that way, if it's not her, you know? And so they basically was, you know, discussing that. We then also had Rose come back into town, okay? She got back from New York. She's saying she's been thinking about the marriage and thinking everything, you know, thinking about everything that she's been through with Dana. She wants to make it work. She does still love him. She does still want to build this family. She wants them to pick up where they left off at and go back to the fertility doctor and build this family up together. And so Dana's very happy to hear that, you know. We have um, August meeting with a friend that apparently is also a nurse that works at the hospital. She's telling her that she's been checking on Aunt Melanie for her. And, you know, she's thanking her for that. And so she says, you know, I got to keep it real with you. I'm going to be honest. I want to tell you something so that way you can hear it from me before anybody else. All right. I have um, been asked to be a character witness for Bridget, and I will be doing that. And August is like, wow, wow, you know. Oh, so do you believe her? She's like, I don't know, but I do know that she's out here by herself. She doesn't have her mother right now. She needs somebody to support her. And at the end of the day, y'all got her out here looking like a pariah in this town, okay? And so she tells August she don't recognize her. She has changed. She's like, you know, I know how much your dad and the legacy means to you. But there is more important things. When did you stop thinking about people? Okay. And so she was over it. And she was ready to go. She was like, child, I'm going to go ahead back to the hospital. Okay. On that note. We then had um, uh, Bridget actually meeting with Kelvin. Because, oh, wait, before that. Rose does go see Bridget as well. She tells her, basically puts her up to speed that she has made a decision. She is going to stay with Dana. She was like, you know, things is complicated. But with her being in New York, like I said, she thought over everything. She realizes what made her fall in love with Dana, the time that she's put into the relationship, and that she does want to build a family with him. Of course, this makes Bridget upset. She's like, you know, you talking about stuff being complicated. I could be facing up to 20 years in prison. You know, my mom is in the hospital. I almost lost her. She's like, child, please get out of my way, okay? Move your car so I could go ahead about my business. I have to go see my lawyer. And I get it that Bridget is hurt. But I'm also like, Bridget, did you really think that... You know, Rose was just going up and leave Dana at the drop of a dime, girl. No. And so we had Bridget there meeting with Kelvin. And he, of course, is trying to go over the questions that they would ask her in court. You know, you already knew that this was your father. How come you didn't been say anything? You was giving them many opportunities that you could have came out and told everybody, you know, what was going on. And you didn't. And she's like, well, you know. I don't know. And then she's like, well, I didn't want to hurt anybody. And so he's like, well, you know, she starts to get upset because she's saying she didn't do this. And he's like, look, I'm just trying to prepare you for what's going on on the stand. I believe you. 
But, you know, this is what is going to be happening. This is what you're going to be up against. And so she tells him that she needs to step out a minute to make a call. You know, um, we have our event August, <coughs> you know, tasting wine, talking about the new dessert wine and how she came up with it so fast. You know, um, they, of course, are talking about the whole Sean and Sean incident. And they like, you know saying that they needed to add a little bit more kick to it you know um august gets a call she apologizes and it's the daggone extortionist calling again saying you know you thought you could get rid of me and she's like oh don't you know i don't we already know it's bridges so you can stop playing games and they say don't call the police or this will make things even worse and so August talking about, I don't know whoever's working with Bridget. She still just keep going to Bridget no matter daggone what. And so she's like, when is this going to end? And she asked, where's Dana? So they was like, you know, if Bridget is the one that's doing this, then if we catch her, we can have her bail immediately revoked, you know. Um, basically trying to figure out, you know, how they could get the daggone officers involved if she's working with a partner and force her to make a deal and roll on them. And so they say they are preparing a case, you know, and they should bring whatever important information they have into the office. And so, um, you know, the investigators showing them all of the drops, time, the place where they dropped the money off at, you know, um, the debt in the father's car, you know, um, and she was like, what else do you have? He was like, you know, surveillance photos, your dad's bank statements, email records, distortion calls, you name it, right? And so they like, okay, this is great. We're going to get this to the DA ASAP, right? We then have, you know, a mom of Vanessa visiting Melanie, okay? She's there at the hospital with her and Christian is there with her. She's laughing and He's like, what's so funny? She was like, the girl on the news is basically her, that was her intern. And so he was like, Dad, that's what's up. He was like, you know, I heard what you did. And um, I think it's gangster. And so she's like, you know, she really appreciates that. And he was like, women should be able to pursue their dreams. And, you know, had Dad moved to New York for a year, it might have been her that had been starting a, com um, a company. So she was like, you know, I appreciate you being enlightened, but you probably would have felt different had it been you that I was leaving. And he was like, maybe, but at the end of the day, I feel like you should get your coin. And so she was like, okay, this is the world according to, um, you know, Christian. And he was like, you know, um, basically starts talking about this girlfriend of hers. And she was like, when am I going to meet her? Is this the girl that you've been hanging around with? And I'm like, yeah, uh, Christian, I don't know about her. Okay, I still got my eye on her. Something about her I just don't trust. But he was telling his mom, you know, you should go ahead and get back into the business, mom. I feel like you could do it. And she was saying, no, she thinks it's, you know, too late for that. She can't go ahead and hop back out there into this now. But I love the relationship that Christian and his mom have. He's always kind of like trying to big her up and cheer her up. And I love that whole vibe of course in the middle of them conversating melanie starts coughing so i'm like okay oh, melanie come on cough it up all right come back to us come into the light baby all right and come back to the land of the living girl and so you know Aunt vanessa well mama vanessa i should say runs over to her and tells christian to go get the doctor and um you know hurry up and so then we had you know, August coming in to see, see Kelvin. She says she wants to tell him something. She was like, they're in a really good place. She don't want to hold nothing back from him. And she don't want him holding nothing back from her. And so she was saying that she wanted to wear a wire so that she could see if she can nab, um, you know, Bridget. And he was like, look, we already supposed to be going back to court. And she tells him about the call. And he's like, what time was that? And he was like, well, no, that couldn't have been Bridget because she was here at the court with me. But then he remembers that Bridget was like, let her step out and make a call. So he says, I tell you what, I got a cop friend. Let's see if he can dig into the records and find out if that call was made from here. And if it wasn't, then we need to start taking all the information you have, meet up tonight and really get to the bottom of this because you do not want to, 
you know, bring Bridget in for this if she's innocent. And then we could start looking for the person that is really doing this. Okay, what I've basically been saying all this daggone time. And so, August does agree, you know, to do this or whatever the case may be. And so, they are supposed to have this, you know, get the information, wait for this call back, and have this meet up tonight to find out what's really good. Okay? And so... Um, you know, after that, we have Melanie and Vanessa talking. All right. For once, they are really talking as sisters. She's saying she want to lose the drama and the lies. You know, Melanie was telling her how, um, uh, her husband, Reggie was always worried about her, always wanted the best for her. He was actually scared of her, you know, possibly leaving again. And, you know, Melanie says, you know what kills me more than even losing you is that Bridget knew that she was Reggie's daughter this whole time. You know, just imagine holding that and keeping that secret for all these years. And she was like, how hard that had to be on her. And, you know, Vanessa's telling her she's going to get through it. And she's like, yeah, but will she forgive me? And she's like, of course she will. And she was like, then please go get her. I need to see her. You know, I want to speak to her. And um, Vanessa tells her, okay. So that was good to see them come into somewhat of a good place and that Vanessa has been by her side in the hospital this whole time. We then had um you know um Kelvin asking August is she sleeping did she doze off and she talking about some no 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 I'm up girl you were sleep all right that's like when we be dozing off and trying to say we just resting our eyes for a minute okay my grandmother used to say that no boo you were sleeping but you up now okay and so he gets the call back from the officer and this did not come from Bridget. Okay. So he like, all right, well, we need to find out what the heck is going on because this call came from the east side of the, um, was it the east or the west? Well, y'all know what I mean. It was the east of the Napa that the call came from and Bridget was in San Fran and this was the same time as the meeting. So it could not be her. Okay. So my girl Bridget was not the extortionist like I said to begin with. All right. And he was like, you know, she's looking at 20 years. She could freaking be in jail till she's 60. She would not be doing this and jeopardizing that and having some damn side person doing whatever still because Bridget was trying to say it could possibly be that and she was like well she's gonna need more concrete proof than that because her brothers are gonna think she's flip-flopping and they're not gonna want to budge so he was like okay fair enough we're gonna get the rest of the information and then be able to take that to your family as proof you know we had freaking Rose call the fertility clinic to start back this process, like I said, she really wants to have this baby. And so, they're telling her, you know, we had already contacted your husband. We already spoke to him. You know, we would need to um have some in-house analysis. And she's like, oh, he left a sample. And they're like, no, we're going to need another one because there's no sperm was detected in that semen the last time. And she was like, what do you mean no sperm? And he, they was like, we gave him all this information and told him his options. And she was like, I don't understand. You called him? And she was like, yes, Miss King, we did. And so she was like, okay, then we'll call you back. And of course, she's just looking at him and she's trying to figure out what the heck is going on. Because of course, Mr. Dana ain't tell her nothing about this. All right. And, you know, she's just standing there watching him. And I'm like, Lord, Dana, you just got her back and you about to lose her again, aren't you? And so, you know, we finally had Bridget get to the hospital and see her mom. You know, they hugging. They happy to see each other. She telling her she's so sorry for icing her back. And her mom is like, listen, we ain't looking back. We ain't holding no grudges. She was like, you know, mom, I'm in quicksand. She was like, look, I believe you. I know you didn't have nothing to do with this. Who else had a key? And she was like, I don't know, August, but that's it. And she was like, are you sure? And she said, yes. So they need to find out who else could possibly have been able to have access to key, you know, to the key. You know, we have to end this mess. Basically, Melanie Bridget and, um, you know, Mama Vanessa is saying this. And so Mama done called up August. August is looking everywhere. She like, honey, you got to look harder. And she was like, mom, then, you know, this is crazy. She was like, you really think somebody planted evidence in her, you know, apartment? She was like, well, we are working on something, too. And I'll fill you in on the details later, you know. 
but so far she's not coming across nothing and then she notices that the window was open and she closes that down you know and so at this point she's at the restaurant with mr pie guy that was always giving her pies and she looking at the car she looking at different reports she thinking that her and kelvin you know is about to be meeting up he's asking her if she's all right she said yeah it's just a lot of drama going on and um he was like how about a manhattan and she was like yeah give it to me super strong but then she gets a message from kelvin saying he's stuck and so she like oh lord you know i'm being stood up so maybe i'll change that and he was like well at least have some pie and he was like you know oh he's stupid for standing you up and so you know he says he sent everybody home and you know she was like keep me company he was like yeah i'll put some ice cream with that so she says she's gonna go to the bathroom and um you know you basically see that he sees the envelope and the pictures and stuff that she has and so the next thing you know she's noticing you know that the back door is open that leads to outside or whatever that's by the toilets and she go ahead and walk outside and so she walking up to the car and of course you know she's looking at the dent there's a dent and remember the father had a dent so they put in two and two together and then see that he has an ID that says Napa training. So now he don't walk out there and see her. She taking pictures of it. And he's like, oh, you ready for your pie? And she's like, yeah, uh, uh, uh-huh, sure, you know, I'm ready. And so she goes back in with him. And of course, we put in two and two together that this is the damn pie guy that's been the damn extortionist, y'all. Okay, creeping in and out and all around they damn property. And so, of course, she's trying to make up excuses and say, I'm not going to be able to stay that long. You know, I found out my aunt woke back up. I need to get to the hospital and things of that nature. And he's basically like, no, girl, you're going to stay. You're going to have a seat. You're going to make yourself, you know, nice and comfortable. OK. And so we have Christian and, you know, his girlfriend talking again. Every time I see this chick, I'm just not trusting her, you know. He's saying that he's not ready for her to meet his mom right now, but he does eventually want, you know, her to meet him. She's saying she's his North Star to the hood. He's saying, girl, I don't need no North Star. And she was like, you know, I see you getting swallowed up by all the bougie but I'm here, you know. I'm drinking your bourbon. I'm having your back. And, you know, I have some investors I want to introduce you to. And she was like, you know, the Christian show, you'll come up and you'll lock stuff down. And so he was like, you know, as the baby of the family, she, his mom always gives him a hard time and stuff like that. And she was like, well, you know, anybody that he bring as a boo or whatever, she had questioned him. And she was like, well, then maybe I don't need to be your boo. I need to be your girl. And, you know, your family needs to know about me unless you don't want all of that or whatever. And, of course, he's like, no, it's not none of that or whatever. Eventually you will, but... You know, I want all of it, but of course I want to do it in good time. And she's just trying to be him in the head and basically gives him a kiss. And so we have August, you know, still trying to play it off with Pie Guy too, taking little bites and like, oh, I like it. And he's talking about, I made this especially for you. So I'm like, oh Lord, you know, no, he could have damn poison in that. And so he was like, oh, I see that you was looking at my car. And she's like, oh yeah, it's nice. And he was like, it's reliable or whatever the case may be. At this point, she does start calling Kelvin. So at least she was like someone smart. That way, either it would go on his voicemail or if he answers it, he could hear what's going on. And so, you know, Pa guy's telling her about how she's a daddy's girl. And, you know, he's basically like coming and grabbing her when she tried to get up and getting rough with her. And she kicked him in his thing and was trying to run. And he's running after her and basically knocks her out. And I'm like, oh, wow, okay. Like, he really was going at her or whatever. And so then we had, you know, Dana and Rose getting their haircuts together or whatever. Talking about, oh, you looking fierce or whatever the case may be. And she said, thank you. And, you know, they got head out. And, of course, she wants to use this time to say, What's really good? What is happening? Because he's talking about how about some takeout, no delivery or whatever, and just acting like everything is A-OK. -okay. And she was like, I spoke to the fertility clinic today, and he's like, oh, good. And she was like, the nurse told me that she called you and told you about the sperm cow. How could you not bring up something like this to me? You should have told me about it earlier. And she's still basically like, we could get through this. We can improve your account. 
you know, there's technology that's advanced, there's diets, there's shots. So Dana going to turn and talk about, I don't want to have a child. Okay, I made this decision two years ago. And she like, what the hell do you mean by that? What exactly happened two years ago? She was like, do not tell me, you know, does this have something to do with the sperm count? She was like, do not tell me that you went and had a daggone, um, you know, vasectomy without talking to me. And I'm like, Dana, are you serious? All this time this lady is talking about this and you know when this fear you had and you actually went and made this decision without her? Like, that was so low. And he'd start talking about how, you know, the child would have to grow up and fight and do this and do that. And she was like, but still, you basically lied to me then because you knew that I wanted kids. You Like I said, we done had this conversation. We done, you know, talked about getting married and making these different plans. And she was like, our relationship was basically built on a lie. You know, I thought our relationship was built on the truth. And she was like, you let me go through this whole charade and I'm taking hormone shots twice a day. My body going through all different kinds of stuff. Like, why? And she was like, you don't understand. And so she was like, I put my body through hell to try to do this. And you never even stopped to tell me the truth. Not one time. So I was like, wow, that really was low. And then he going to talk about where you going because, of course, she ready to walk away. And he was like, are you going to Bridget? And she was like, you always knew that I was into girls, you pig. She was like, this is not me leaving because I'm bi or because I like Bridget or any of that. This is me leaving because you're an asshole and you let your insecurities blind you. And she was like, I love you, Dana. Like, you don't realize how much you hurt me. You were my heart, my partner for all these years. And it was all a lie. You know, and that's worse than some stupid bloody kiss. And so he basically was like, if you try to get out this marriage, you'll lose your job. She was like, he said, isn't my dad's will. She said, I don't give a shit. And I was like, all right, I know that's right, Rose. I'm 150% with you there. That was so disgusting that he lied to her like that. Okay, there's no excuse for that, Dana. I'm sorry. And so... You know, at this point, August is up. She's sitting at the table. He got her hands tied behind her back. And he is basically, you know, telling her like, oh, surprise, August. And she was like, why the hell would you do this? You know, making calls, framing bridges. She was supposed to be your friend, too. Like, you know, she's facing jail. You didn't care about none of that. And he was like, why is always the question? And so he going to talk about some, you know, your dad was something else. And plus, you made it easy. All you girls... You know, leaving y'all windows open. And she like, you broke in my house. You want a man in the dark inside the money drop. And he was like, yep, I cloned her cell. You know, it was just something so easy. So much family, so much for friends, right? And so she was like, my family was good to you. And he gonna talk about you called what your family did good. He was like, you know, she said, my father bought your father's land and helped him and built him out. He was like, no, he stole the land. He was like, that was supposed to be my inheritance. He was like, your father act like he came from nothing. And, you know, that was all a lie. And so he was like, he fleeced my grandfather, whatever the case may be. He made it seem like he was a struggling brother from Oakland when really he was a damn, um, you know, neurologist or whatever the case may be, pouring my ass. And so she was like, he was a businessman and he was like, he played us. And she was like, no, I'm, you assume because he was black, he had nothing. And so, you know, my, he's going to talk about my grandfather could have sold that land to anybody. So I'm like, really, you mad because, you know, a black man was able to take the land and get it and make it something. If he could have sold it to anybody, then what difference does it make that he sold it to his father? Then what are you mad about? Like you contradicting yourself. And so he was like, you know, now all of y'all have empires or whatever the case may be, because he was saying that Sean and Sean have their vineyard too. And so he was like, I'm still sitting here on a pile of shit or whatever the case may be. And everybody else is making it but me. And so she was like, so you jealous? You jealous that we have this company and you running this place? And he was like, you know, saying his family had owned the land for over um a hundred years and he was like after what happened with COVID or right before what happened with COVID he had tried to go and talk to him and he was like you know what the good doctor said to me and then she's basically like what and she he gonna talk about oh he laughed in my face like I was nothing and she was like because you probably didn't have the money and then he's like because of him and she was like, no, because your grandfather sold too early and he wasn't thinking about the end game. And he going to tell her she don't get to talk to him like that. Do she know who he is? And he, you know, do know what his family was. And he was like, you know, 
not like y'all a bunch of and she was like a bunch of what she was like say it please say it and i'm going yeah say it please we all want to hear you dude say what you gotta say okay and so he gonna talk about a bunch of people who have no history here like are you kidding me how dare you so she he gonna talk about this was our blood this was ours and she said no this was my family's dream and she was like and um you don't get to walk up to a black man and take his land. She was like, not like Central Park, not like Bruce Beach, not like Black Wall Street or the whole damn country for that matter. And I was like, I know that's right. Okay, August, tell him about his damn self. And she was like, you know, we put the blood and sweat into this. And so she was like, not your white privilege ass, okay? Doesn't get to make it about the face and reclaim something that we worked our asses off for decades. And I was like, you better let him know, August, all right? So she was like, my father laughed at you and I don't care. I'm laughing at your ass too, okay? We are kings and you better recognize it. So I was like, all right, August, I'm here for that. So August started fighting. I was like, yes, August, fight him, fight him, fight him. Get him, get him, get him, girl, okay? And so he was like, um, you know, if there's one thing his your daddy loved the most is his little angel. And I hope you like the pie and basically, you know. Saying that he gonna get her since she's the thing that the dad loved the most. And August started beating the mess out of him, baby. And I was here for every minute of it, okay? She was pounding his damn head in the floor and choking the mess out of him. And I was like, get him, August. Get him. Get him, girl. And the police had to come and pull her off of him. They was like, all right, August. All right, all right, all right. And she was like, you hurt my father, you entitled piece of shit. And was just trying to chop his damn head off. And like I said, I was here for every moment of it, okay? And then Kelvin came and was like, are you all right? And he was holding her and she was like, yeah. I was like, okay, so I guess Kelvin wasn't trash, okay? But we shall see, okay? But so far, he came through, all right? Maybe my bad vibes about him were not right, okay? And so him and her, you know, were sitting and talking and stuff like that. And then we had all the family back in the room together, right? We got um August there. We got Dana there. We got Christian there. We got, um, you know, Miss Vanessa there. And Bridget comes and says, you know, she needed some time to herself because they were saying, oh, we wasn't getting no calls. We didn't know what was going on. And they tasting the wine, but they saying there's still something missing. And Miss Bridget comes in and was like, well, I got an idea, but I'm going to need y'all to go ahead and make me vice president and give me like a 20% increase. Okay, baby, for me to start spilling my tea. And so Dana's like, oh, you can't come in and be trying to blackmail us into a higher position. And she was like, well, wait, let me hear her out. She was like, you know, if it works and it makes the difference that you're saying it, it will, then you have earned it and I will consider that. And so, you know, she offers up, you know, her secret ingredient, her little own brew that she has in the back of the vineyard. And then Christian also offers up you know, his bourbon, because they were saying they want to give theirs a different twist. We already know that Sean and Sean has stole their other ingredients before and made a cheaper version of it. And so, you know, like I said, you know, Dana want to be mad, like you can't waltz in here trying to demand a promotion, but, you know, August was like, it's worth considering, but I have to see if your idea actually kicks it up a notch. So she was like, well, those hybrid grapes that I've been, you know, doing in the back, and um they was like okay yeah that could be still a good idea and like i said christian throws in the, the bourbon so they was like finally that showstopper hooch would come into you know what i'm saying with good use and so she was like okay well we don't have roles so we're gonna have to call the pr company and see if we can get it on a midday show and see if we can get this role you know going so i like the fact that even though it was all this drama and you know, everything that has happened, they have been able to come back together and say, all right, we're going to pull it all together to get this done for the family and the wine. And so now they have, you know, Mama Eve, I mean, sorry, Auntie Yvette boyfriend there and, you know, his um boss and they sipping the wine and they like, hmm, okay, all right, you know, this is good. They was like, shoot, I can taste the bourbon in there all right now. And so they say it's smooth, it's sweet, you know, I'm feeling this. And so they was like, you know, I only agreed to another tasting because Jason swore that yours was better than that Sean and Sean cheap version. And I have to say he was right. This is wonderful, okay? And we want to distribute this one. And so, you know, 
August tells them you can have this in four months, but you have to drop Sean and Sean and work exclusively with us. And basically, they like, that's fine, okay? They agreed to it, and he tells them you have a deal. And so he was like, those two was just starting to get on my nerves, and one of those Sean's was extra, extra. And so, you know, Auntie Yvette was telling August, like, all right, come through. You better work, bitch, like you did that. And so now we get Christian with the girlfriend. She has him meeting with these two guys. They talking about, you know, oh, this is um, good. We can taste him. You know, we know what's smart and what to go with. You know, this is definitely it. And, you know, Christian is like, what do y'all think? And he like, we in. He like, y'all serious? He was like, listen, we know money when we see it. And so Christian like, okay. He like, well, y'all go ahead and relax. You know what I'm saying? Enjoy yourselves. The place is yours. I appreciate you. They telling him it's my pleasure. He was like, you know, thanks a lot. And so he all hugging and kissing the girl all happy. She was like, I told you, baby, this was going to be a good start. And he was like, man, she was like, you about to shine. And so, you know, he like, yeah, look at me pop now. I'm about to shine. You know, we have Bridget talking to her mom, telling her she could be eligible for this trial. You know, of course, her mom talking about, listen, I just want to use some herbs, <laughs> okay, and call it a day. You know, she don't want to be back and forth in the hospital and back and forth with doctors, whatever have you. And so, you know, she's telling her, no, mom. And so she started coughing and she was like, let me go get you some tea. So when she steps out there, we see the white man that she had kept, you know, calling back and forth with or whatever, the one that told her he couldn't mess with her no more. And she was like, what are you doing here? Who told you I was here? He was like, your cleaning lady gave it up pretty quickly or whatever. So he was like, I've been trying to call you now that you're out the woods to let you know that Fez wants you in the New York Fair. And she was like, well, now you willing to be back as my gallerist? And he was like, you know, I just needed to give you some space. What do you say? And she said, well, I say anybody that wants to rep me sometime me, I can't mess with. Tell Fez I will call them on my own. And he was like, you making a big mistake, um, Bridget. And she says, oh, I'm making room for a better opportunity. And she seems like she's in a better place and comfortable and confident with herself as far as that goes. So we are finding out that he was only there to represent her for her paintings, okay? It had nothing to do with no extortionist mess or any of that. You know, we had August walking up to her, like, you know, apologizing again, saying she hate that they've been in this space. You know, she don't know what she could do to make amends to her. She was like, we got our distribution deal back. You know, they're going to get the promotion. I mean, you're going to get the promotion. Congratulations. And so, you know, Bridget is like, thanks. And of course, like I said, she's apologizing, saying she hate to have all this had to happen. And how can she fix it? And Bridget is basically like, like, August, we've been through a lot since dad's death. She was like, you know. Um, I'm always going to love you, but as far as us being in relationships, I can't deal with your antics anymore. You know, I think that we should keep this strictly a business relationship and focus on moving this company and making it the biggest vineyard in the world. And so she was like, let's face it. If you was a true sister or my friend, then none of this would have happened in the first place. And so, you know, August is saying Bridget what happened to us. And Bridget basically was like, girl. You know, listen, we came to an impasse, you know, it's as simple as that. And she was like, now let's just draw some boundaries starting today right now. OK, and I will see you at work. And at the end of the day, I can't be mad at Bridget for that. If anything, I think she actually was being kind of nice by even doing that, because I probably wouldn't want to talk to none of them no more after they don't blame me, you know, for freaking extorting them you know so we had miss yvette sitting with her boot thing and she eating strawberries and honey he have this little cake with a ring on top and she like isn't it too soon and he was like look we ain't getting no younger okay what you say yvette and i'm like all right auntie yvette get it girl all right she done snapped her up a man and so we seeing um christian laying in the freaking bed with home girl and her phone going off. And of course, the same Cornelius that she's setting him up with. Talking about, you did good, girl. And she talking about, yeah, this boy is a sucker. I knew she couldn't be freaking trusted with a ding dong dong. And then going to delete the message right after. And lay back down with Christian. <sighs> we then had Zahina leaving a message from Rose. Talking about, come on, Rose, pick up the phone. 
You know, please, I'm begging you. Dana Rose don't want to hear what you got to say, okay? And we had Rose talking to um Bridget, you know, saying, what are you doing? And she was like, well, Dana and I, you know, had our, our dust up. None of the family reached out to me or whatever the case may be. They didn't call me. They treated me just like they did you. And um, Dana received, deceived me for years. I put time there and they just can't write me off, okay? She was like, you know, we family for Christ's sake. So she was like, look, Rose, I can't go down this road again. And she was like, look, it's too late for that. I know where all these skeletons are. Do you want to get dirty? And she's basically pouring some wine. So I'm like, Rose, come on now. Like, just be direct and to the point. Talk to these people about what's going on, okay? Because I see this about to be a hot mess all over again. Then we have some guy that walks in, you know, to um Miss Vanessa house. And she's talking about, you must be the new pool boy. You know, our staff usually enters on the side. And he was like, no, actually, I'm your new neighbor. I bought son and son's place. And she was like, oh, so you're a wine maker? He was like, no, I'm a hoteler. And he all looking in the back or whatever. And he was like, my business partner and I are buying up a few of the vineyards and putting five-star resorts there. And she was like, you know, this land can't be used for commercial monstrosities, okay? She ain't trying to hear it. And he like, well, money can change everything. If anyone should know, that should be you, Miss Vanessa King. And so, I'm looking at him like, what's this guy's story? And he like, perhaps we'll talk soon. And she's like, perhaps. And they shake hands. And then he going down to kiss her damn hand and talking about some, I like to taste your wine. And for some reason, I don't think he was talking about the wine, y'all, okay? And so, she starts screaming out for freaking August. Like, you know, August, where the hell you at, August? And she was like, honey, we have a problem. And when we see our girl August, she basically is sitting where we had started out the season where her dad was first sitting. You know, she's looking out. She got her wine glass, the wine bottle. She got a cigar sitting up there. And she's just looking, you know, where she has the whole view of the vineyard and the house, which is such a beautiful view. And then she gets up and walks off from there. And that is basically how the episode ended. I love this series. I hope it's coming back. I hope we're going to get more you know, what did y'all think about it? What did y'all like? What y'all didn't like? And all that good stuff. Put it in the comments. Like, share, comment, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Till next time. Toodaloo.